Alexander's now studying at the Slade Art School in London and called on his old art teacher for help with an original project. Brendan Lynch allowed his former pupil to work in his year seven classes. is the cruelest month. Well, it certainly is for one young woman and her family. Oh, I don't know, Morse. I've been looking into my pension. I mean, you pay in all your life and you think you're all right, but when the time comes, it's not half what you thought it was going to be. You're not. Oh, no, no, no. Mind you, you've got to make way for the young sometime. Why? You, you can't retire, sir. And what would you do? Learn to make filet de boeuf on croute and creme brulee? Well, as a matter of fact, 
I, it's all very well for you. You're not married. <sighs> Don't you ever get sick of it, Morse? Spending your entire life on shootings, stabbings, strangling... Work. That's the secret of life. You have to buckle down and uh, give it your best. And that's what my father said. Oh. And you better buckle on down after Lewis and see you shot this poor girl. And you will give it your best, won't you? So, I saw him. Definitely a him. Well, do you think I can't tell the difference at my age? Two husbands I've had, six children, 18 grandchildren. Did you hear a, a shot or any loud bangs? 20 past. I was just putting the ashes out. Going down the back, he was. He had a hat on and all. I thought he was her fancy man. All right, all right. Thanks very much. Come on, in the when can you give us a statement, Inspector? Chief back, Inspector. We have deadlines, you know. I don't know what the Chief Super told you, sir, that Super Lewis is losing his grip. Well, he's getting on. No, he's not. He's the same age as... You do realise, if he goes, you wouldn't resign. I wouldn't have to. He'd be out of my ear. He'd bring in some smarty-pants young... He'd take one look at me and... Well, my we could use some new thinking in Thames Valley. Thinking, Lewis. Thinking, old or new, would be a very welcome change all round. Ready for you yet, Morse? Unless you'd like to give me a hand. So? It's the big meeting about the mastership. Don't worry. You're gonna win. You're gonna grind that Julian stores beneath your chariot wheels. Well, maybe if we're quick. <laughs> simply stay on as master. One of my predecessors continued in office till 103. I don't know if anyone wants to urge that cause. Mrs. Hammersby, perhaps? If I had such an urge, master, I would repress it. Oh, but it's so bad to repress urges. I never do. It's 9.35, master. Ah, oh, well, when a middle-aged fellow marries one of his students, and a ravishingly beautiful one at that. I'm so sorry, Master. I... The college accepts your apology, Dennis. In my case, with envy. May we proceed? How close was he when he fired the shot? Right up against the window. The blind was down. She wouldn't have seen him. And how the hell did he see her? Charlie! Do the blind bit, would you? Right. It was instant, if that's any comfort. I suppose it's no good asking when. No, but you can come in now. People opposite saw Miss James collecting the milk just after 70. She was Miss? Miss Rachel James, 27, single, physio. Worked at a clinic on the Woodstock Road. Parents lived to a key. Then the woman next door, she saw what she thought was Miss James's fancy man, around the back there, 
25 plus. Fancy indeed. And another neighbour was taking a dog for a walk along the path at the back there. 7.35. She saw the light on and the crack in the window. Nice narrow parameters for you, Morse. Should have it all solved before I finish the autopsy. It's easy enough for you, bullet hole like that. Oh, a snip. A snip here to see if Miss James was pregnant. A snip there to see if she had some fatal disease. We will be snipping all morning. Someone loved her. Due notice having been given and due process observed, there are therefore only two candidates for the office of 35th Master of Lonsdale. Julian Storrs and Dennis Cornford. A straight fight like this sadly gives little opportunity for horse trading. But malice and spite are gratifyingly increased by the fact that you know the candidates so well. I'm sure they will both do their best to uphold the college tradition. Thank you, Master. May the best man win. I, alas, have no vote and am therefore spared the blandishments of the candidates. The rest of you will have to bear them as you can. Tomorrow, being Founders' Feast, the electioneering will no doubt be especially intemperate. Any other business? No? Then I declare the meeting closed. A lively young wife in the master's lodgings. Might it not lead to scandal? Better than an old girl. Look at the state of this fence, sir. Anyone could have got through there, no trouble. Where does this path run to and from, Jackson? It runs all along behind the houses, sir, out to the road. Easy enough. Leave the car, walk down the path. Through the fence, down the garden. Be in and out in a couple of minutes. And was he leading her up the garden path beforehand? Who sent that valentine, Lewis? Fancy man of a certain age, surely. Hands, knees and bumps, said Daisy. Not exactly top of the pops, is it? Patient, perhaps? You'd better get down to that clinic, see what her colleagues have to say. Julian Stores. Angela, I'm sorry. Yes, it's uh, as we thought. It's just Dennis and me. Good, then it's ours. I never count chickens, darling, but I do collect debts. I don't care. We're going to win. Just one, Angela. Just to celebrate. Get those out, will you? Chief Inspector, it was a single shot, was it? All in good time. Anyone hear it? A couple of the neighbours think they may have done. Not Mrs. Adams, though. No, she's, she's deaf as a post, even with her hearing aid. And this side, it's Jeff Owens, Oxford Mayor. Well, I didn't hear anything. I'd gone to work. Well, why the hell didn't you say so before? Eight. You've got eight solid. Four more yes, one well, the master may be a bastard, but he had Shelley and me to dinner last night with George Summers, Allied Steel Engineering. Nice chap. He used to be a pupil of Clixby's. And Allied, Allied Steel Engineering may be offering the college two new fellowships, worth approximately a million and a half. How the hell did you know that? Clixby gave Summers lunch with Julian and Angela Storrs. It's obvious. Summers will only stump up if the new master is the one Clixby wants. Hell, you must find out what Clixby wants for his support. Angela, needless to say, is telling everyone they've got the mastership in their pocket already. Then they've got another thing coming. <laughs> I certainly hope so. We can't have her lording it over the college. I know it runs against all Oxford tradition, Dora, but I'm not standing just to stop the stores. I actually want the job, and I'm going to get it.
I'm all for flexi time. I can get a day's work in before anyone else arrives, and I miss the traffic both ways. Of course, if I'd known, I'd miss a murder as well. How did you hear about it? Della Cecil at number two. She's a friend of mine. She found me at work. You're not married, I take it? No. There's no one else living at your house? No. And this Miss, uh, Mrs... Cecil. Miss Cecil. No. She's just a friend. Alas. And what about Miss James? How well did you know her? We were neighbours. She borrowed my corkscrew once. I borrowed her jump. Did she have a boyfriend? Someone sent her a valentine. Not me. Any close friends in the village? She and Della were pretty close. Had each other's keys and so on. Why didn't you ask her? Thank you, sir. It would never have occurred to me to question the neighbours. Look, um, we go to press soon. I don't suppose our photographer... You don't suppose correctly, sir. Right. Thanks. I want you to concentrate on finding Cherubino's frustration. Und de si io che non posso spiegare, mi fa palpitare. Miss Cecil. Jeff. Thanks. <clears throat> Doctor Stores, this is um, Jeff Owens, Oxford Mail. We'd like to do a piece on the up-and-coming election at Lonsdale, but I need a bit of background. Something about yourself, your wife, your kids. Do you have any kids? I'd especially like to talk to Mrs. Stores, how she sees the role of master's wife in modern-day Oxford. Rachel didn't have much luck with men, I mean. I'm always married or turned out gay. I kept telling her she mustn't let herself be the victim. Well, she was down in the dumps after yet another crisis in her love life, so I took her to a concert at Lonsdale. I helped with the music there, you see. I thought little Vivaldi might cheer her up. It's about all Vivaldi's good for, if you ask me. Well, Rachel didn't know about music. She... I don't know policemen, but... I'm a Wagner man myself. Oh, well, Wagner. Now, that is music. I mean, he was a horrible man. Beauty and ugliness. I meet those in my profession every day. So, what happened at this concert? There's a fellow of Lonsdale. He's quite well known, actually. Julian Stores. 60, married, typical Rachel. Of course, she wanted him to leave his wife, but that was never on. Julian. Well, Angela, she's a very... very strong, sort of... I, I'm sure... I mean, I can't imagine Julian. I mean, he's running for master of the college. I understand you had keys to Miss James's house. Yes, she was always losing hers. Did you use them often? Occasionally. 
last month, for instance. She was in London with Julian, and it started to snow. She rang me to go in and switch the central heating on. You still got those keys? At home, yes. Do you want them? Possibly. Would Dr. Storrs have sent that? Was there anyone else in her life? Oh, no. No, she may have been a poor picker, but she was always loyal to whom she picked. <laughs> you said, to whom? My sergeant, I've been trying to teach him the difference between who and whom for years. Well, thanks very much, Miss Cecil. My name's Adele. I thought Mr. Owen said... I particularly dislike being called Della. It's pretty sensitive to the front porch in the British Museum. It's close to most of the big theatres, and it's good for restaurants and shops. You can get a double room here for £48 uh, a night. Yes, just a minute. £48 if you want to buy. Sorry. Who's speaking? Yes, it's me. Oh, no, of course I haven't forgotten. How could I? Yes. That's a wretch. It's Jeffrey. I need to speak to you about your article. And I've got a few questions I'd like to ask about your standing for the mastership. If you wouldn't mind calling me. 0836 276 259. Thanks. Hi. Oh, what a morning. I'm starving. Champagne lift your spirits. Box fizz, would. A box fizz, please, and um, another of these for me. Same as usual. While we're about it, will you put a bottle of number 17 on us? Sure. Thanks. Three of them work in this clinic. Well, there was three. The other two are really upset. Like Miss Jones a lot. No one married with kids. Didn't see much of her outside work. She didn't talk about her private life. No, well, she wouldn't, would she? Not when she was having an affair with a married man. Hands, knees, and bumps a daisy. Julian Storr sent that Valentine. I'll bet you anything. What are you having? Fight, hope you think. Thanks. Uh, no, no, you'll be driving. Uh, an orange juice, please, and um, I'll have a pint of that. But Miss Cecil, or Miss uh, Adele Cecil, she introduced them. Who regrets it now, but uh, a highly intelligent woman, Lewis, likes Wagner and doesn't like that reporter. So why'd she ring and tell him about the murder? What do you got against him? Well, his hair, to start with. And his car. Bulbous little vulgarity. That'll be £3.15. Do you reckon he fancied Rachel James? Oh, says not, but... Uh, have you got anything smaller, sir? It's just I've changed a couple of twenties already today and I'm right out of change. Oh, sorry. Uh, Lewis, do you have... Uh... Thank you. I really don't want to do anything, but... Well, you know how Jack is, Diane, I... I'm only asking you for one small favour. You know how much I've done for you? Don't bully me, Mum. You've always bullied me. No, I'm, so, so I'm not bullying you now. I'm simply asking you. Well, this is a... This is a pleasant surprise, Diane. A surprise, anyway. Have you had lunch, Gillian? Mustn't jump to conclusions, of course, but suppose Owens did fancy Miss James. Suppose he was jealous of him. Of who? Lewis. 
of stores. Suppose Miss James rejected Owen's advances. Suppose she didn't. Suppose she was carrying on with stores and Owen's. And suppose your Miss Cecil fancied Owen's and was jealous of her. She's not my Miss Cecil, and she doesn't even like him. Says not. But suppose she was having an affair with Owen's and he was looking next door instead. She had the key to the house. She could have been in and out there all the time, sniffing things out. We are not looking for a woman, Lewis. She put you straight on the stores, isn't she? She pretends not to like Owens, but she gives him his alibi. Right, let's check that alibi. You go down to the Ox and Mail. Find out precisely when Owens got there. Find out everything about him. There's something wrong with that man. Feel it in my... Beer? Thank you, Lewis. No, no, I'll take you up on it later. Now, let's get on. What do you mean it's too erudite? <clears throat> All right, but for God's sake, what? <laughs> Wouldn't anyone feel better suited to the mastership than Julian? Uh, no, you can't quote that. I see nothing wrong with ambition. Matter of fact, I don't think there's enough of it about. I'd rather not do that if you... No, no, we're not politicians. It's all very gentlemanly. Well, if Julian's willing, I suppose. Uh, so long as there's nothing too personal. Uh, uh, can we do both at once? Yes, I can arrange that. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Thanks. It's childish, I know, but... Uh, well, it wasn't really a grand passion on her side or mine. It was more a... I, I just liked her very much. I... Well, she... understood. She... Understood what, sir? My wife is a... We met on a cruise in the Pacific. I was the, you know, guest lecturer. And she, um... Well, everyone drinks rather a lot on those things, and, uh... Tell you the truth, I didn't really notice. <laughs> Do you want another? Thanks, I'm fine. She, uh... Angela, I mean, in her own way, she's... Look. There's no need for her to know about me and Rachel, is there? I don't know, sir. Where were you at seven o'clock this morning? Me? Oh, uh, up and about. I mean, I like to start work early, always have done, <laughs> ever since I was in the, um, in the, um... Well, anthropology begins at dawn. <laughs> Before, sometimes. Can your wife confirm where you were, sir? Ah, well, you see, we, we, we have separate bedrooms. She likes to sleep in, you see, and... Uh... But um, this morning, as it happens, I uh, went into hers and we... Uh... But for God's sake, if you ask her about that, she'll want to know why. She'll... No other witness, sir. What, do you have witnesses when you're in bed with your wife? I'm not married. Huh? Miss Cecil says... Oh, come on. You don't want to believe everything Adele Cecil tells you. I'm sorry, she... she didn't approve of our liaison. She was hardly one to speak. She, um... One of my colleagues and she, they, uh... Which colleague was that? I'm sorry, I'd really rather not say. It was Dennis Cornford. My rival for master, as it happens. He's married since. If you ask me, that's why Adele... <sighs> What would the fellows say if they knew what both candidates had been up to? Congratulations, I should imagine. The only way you can get rid of a master here is for moral turpitude. <laughs> and if that meant fornication, we'd be lucky to keep one in 500 years. I 
understand they take rather that liberal view in the Pacific. What? Oh, yes, well, they did till the wretched missionaries got there. You, um... My father was obsessed with Captain Cook. Captain James Cook, 1728 to 1779, he always called him. Said he was the greatest explorer that ever lived. Oh, well, you see, he couldn't say that nowadays. No, the correct modern view is that Western explorers brought guns, disease and Christianity, each equally destructive to an idyllic way of life. Idyllic. Well, Rachel, if things had been different. Oh, God. You know, sometimes I wish I ran a little corner shop and sold jujubes. I expect you'd really rather run a college, sir. Yes, well. I think I'm really more a scholar than an administrator. I got a two-day conference this weekend in Bath, as a matter of fact. But it means a great deal to my wife. Hi, Shai Cornford. Oh, Quixby, hello. Well, yeah, um, okay. I can manage that. Hey, you know what it's like around here, Sergeant? You don't put razor wire in a ring of anti-personnel mines around your car park. Lord Nuffield didn't know what he was starting. Yeah, with this system, we can not only keep unauthorized cars out, we can check who's coming in and out and when. With flexi time, there's rather too much having to trust people's word about when they come and go. Can't rely on anyone these days. How's Mr. Owens? Oh, I don't mean Jeff. One of the hardest working people on my star. Oh. Here between 7 and 7.20, every morning, week in, week out. Not you till 7.30. Uh, good company man, Jeff. What about this morning? Uh, 7.18 and 14 seconds. And he left again? 8.43 and 57 seconds. Thanks. It's just with him being a neighbour, you know. <laughs> He's furious. Lives next door to a murder and misses it. <laughs> <laughs> No use to you, Quixby. You couldn't get half your books in, and to make a decent drawing room, you'd have to gut the whole front and put in at least two RSJs. <laughs> Whatever they may be. I do love house hunting. It gives me a chance to pry into other people's lives, all their little squalors and shabbiness. Oh, this place is only shabby because they're going to move. Your house isn't shabby. Your taste. Everyone thinks it most original. But we're not going to move, or are we? <laughs> It was so sweet of you to lend your expertise to help an old man. Uh, can I beg the further favour of a cup of tea before I return to the lodgings, which could so easily... <laughs> oh, Lewis. What's the stop press from the Oxford Mail? Geoffrey Owens has done a pretty good story. And what's the story on Geoffrey Owens? Clocked into the car park, 718. Clocked out again, 843. Forensic says the gun was a Beretta 38 automatic. Oh, and Dr. Hobson says Miss James wasn't pregnant. Stalls say where he was. <laughs> In bed with his wife. Having an affair often makes a man keener to make love to his wife, they tell me. No one makes love before breakfast, not on a weekday. <laughs> He'd got a bad back, too. He used to tell his wife he was going off to see his physio, which, of course, he was. Let's see what Mrs. Storr says she was doing this morning. So classically beautiful here. Nymph and shepherd and a crystal lake. More chemical than crystal. The farmer lets his slurry leak into the stream and it kills all the fish. Oh, dear. Appearance and reality at odds again. Two sugars, please. Your appearance and reality aren't at odds, though. You really do love Dennis, in spite of the age difference? Because of it, maybe. Experience and innocence, you know? Hmm. How much do you know about his experience? I know about Adele Cecil, if that's what you mean. 
she wasn't the only one. I should hope not. A man his age? Anyways, I'm more interested in the future than the past. Quite right. Away with old fogies like me. Not relevant, are we? Not like, um, is it media studies Dennis wants to introduce so we'll all know how to work our videos? <laughs> well, you need a PhD for that. <laughs> you and Dennis, you misjudge me, you know. I live entirely for the present. People do as they get older. Well, I'm glad there are compensations. <laughs> and to be brutally up to the minute, not to say state of the art, I presently have power to change your life. And I don't see the point of having power if one doesn't abuse it, do you? This isn't funny, Quixby. No. The deal is, as you Americans say, I can make Dennis master, but only if you... Think of it as charity, my dear. Making an old man happy. Old man? Oh, creep. And when I tell Dennis... Oh, if Dennis gets to know this conversation, George Summers will express his preference for Julian Storrs immediately. You can just piss off out of our garden. Think about it, my dear. The tiny sacrifice. A huge reward. Thanks for tea. Are you sure you won't have one? Thanks, but uh, on duty, you know. I'm sorry. I am rather nervous. I've never been questioned by the police before. Oh, it's not really a questioning, madam. We just have to eliminate all Miss James's clients from our inquiries. Of course. Such a horrible... All I really need to know is where your husband was between 7 and 7.30 this morning. <laughs> what did he tell you? Well, it's true. But I don't know how you expect us to prove it. You're quite sure of the time, Mrs. Thors. When you get to our age, Inspector, it happens so rarely you remember every single detail. I think it must have been the excitement about the college that set my husband off. Did he tell you about that? Yes. Anyway, as it happens, my radio alarm went off just as Jim Naughty at a time like that. And before you ask if there were any witnesses to this sadly unusual act, well, I, I had a pretty good figure when I was young and I tried most things, but public lovemaking. Have you ever tried that? No. No. Nor have I. So, does this mean you're going to keep us on your list of suspects? What makes you think that you're a suspect, madam? Oh, but suppose my husband did it and I was lying to protect him. Wouldn't that make me an accessory? Yes. Well, perhaps he did. Perhaps I am. But we mustn't joke about such things. That poor girl. You sure you wouldn't like a drink? Quite sure. Thank you. Mrs. Storrs killed Miss James. She had the motive. She couldn't shoot straight enough. Not the amount she drinks. Well, there's people, surgeons and that, drink to study themselves. We are looking for a man, Lewis. Ah, uh, Lewis. Ah, oh, Morse. How's it going? Nothing much to report yet, sir. What's the matter? Brain nobody was? My brain is fine, thank you. I did today's Times crossword in 11 minutes. If you spent less time on your crosswords, matey, and more on your cases, perhaps you would have something to tell me. I'd like to have something to tell the Chief Constable tomorrow morning. It's his team against the Lord Lieutenant. 
And the Chief's done me the honour of asking me to tee off with him against Sir Henry. Nice for you. Give you a chance to get some advice about your pension. Huh? Well, he's the chairman of an insurance company, isn't he? One doesn't talk business on a golf course, Morse. You keep him up to the mark with this. No more crosswords. And a lot less beer. First fine careless rapture. It's supposed to wear off, you know? Who says? <laughs> right. Founder's feast tonight. Angela will be wearing something extremely expensive and vulgar. So we must go for understated elegance. What have you got? Uh, you know the secrets of my wardrobe, hon. Yes. Time for a commando raid on the boutiques. We've got to show this woman up, Shelley. People quite like Julian. We've got to keep reminding them what a cow she is. We're not just a teeny bit letting this election affect our judgment, are we? Nothing in my life has ever mattered more. And you are entirely to blame. I used to laugh at people who talked about having a purpose in life. Not anymore. won't answer the phone and he's usually up by half past six but I can't wake him. Mr. Owens? Mr. Owens? Mr. Owens? Come on, 
for God's sake. Move over. Weekend drivers. No need to kill us. Let's go in. Let's go in the kitchen. It's number 15. I know it is, Dixon. And I know where you were supposed to be all night. Keeping Bloxham Drive safe for its inhabitants. I was here, sir. Did I... you hear the shot? No, sir. What were you listening to? Heavy metal. Oh, Moss. Look at this. Looks awfully like the twin brother of the one that did such a good job next door. I'll excavate the other one when I get back to the lab. Any idea when? Same time as yesterday, I should guess. 7 to 7.30. As to tomorrow's, I should say probably ooh, 7 to 7.30. Shall we put it in our diaries now? Looks like Owen's let him in, sir. No sign of forcible entry. The front door was locked and the back door was shut, but the snip wasn't on, so... Right. Came through the garden again. Don't you think you should put a guard on number 13? What? I'm sure the few remaining unmurdered citizens of Bloxham Drive will welcome a little protection. And the killer's working his way down the street. 17, 15, 13's obviously next. <coughs> Grizzly job for a woman, Lewis. These remarks she keeps making. It's a form of displacement activity. Oh, yeah. Who lives at number 13? Wait a minute. 11? 15? There is no number 13. Come on. Coming along from there, looking for Owens at number 15. Seven, nine, 11, 13, 15. But as the builder was superstitious, and there's no number 13, nine times out of 10, the victim is known to the murderer. Rachel James was the 10th. She didn't know him, and he didn't know her. Because it wasn't her he meant to kill. But uh, I, I know he fired through the blind at Miss James, at a silhouette. But even so, surely he could see it was a woman. Rachel James had her hair pulled back, didn't she? Like his horrible ponytail. Talk about death by misadventure. Mistaken for the next door neighbor. You better get back to the Oxford Mail. I'll see what I can dig up here. Let's try in there. No, no, it's too expensive. Nonsense. It's water the death. I want you to blow Angela right out of the water. Bloody hell! Miss Strange? I thought you should know, sir. I think Rachel James was killed by mistake for Jeffrey Owens. I don't care if she was... Yeah, all right. Thanks. Yes, uh, right, thanks. Uh, sorry, sir. I, I forgot to switch it off. You shouldn't bring your work onto the course, Strange. It's no way to relax. It just doesn't do. You must play the shot again, Sir Henry, of course. Thank you. I will. Bloody hell! Is he working on anything dodgy? Well, but he told me. He just did the usual local stories. People like him. There were any complaints? It's a bit reserved. Uh, aloof, you might say. Well, I mean, uh, coming in earlier than anyone else, leaving before everyone else. He didn't mix with the rest of us. He didn't seem to want to. He only really had one hobby. She's the one that was going racing with him this morning. This one lives right across the road. 
She was very iffy about him, apparently. Now I see why. Not into commitment now, Geoffrey. If you ask me, starting early in the morning, damn good excuse for not staying the night before, if you follow me. Complicated love life, huh? How much did she pay? Not enough for the way he carried on. Always assumed he had private money. I don't need to, darling. No, we'll need ten when I'm master. We're going to be dining all over England. I'm perfectly happy with life as it is, Dennis. You mustn't be disappointed if things... You don't honestly think I could lose? No. To Julian Stores? No, it's just... You want it so badly, it, it, it's scary. If I don't get the mastership, it'll be too late. I'll have wasted my... I'll have let you down. Okay. Okay. Let's leave these in your room. I'll change there before the feast, and they won't get crushed in the car. Oh, God. You start taking your clothes off in college. <laughs> Lewis, look at this. Owens was a blackmailer. I found all these in his study. So that's where the money came from. It certainly wasn't his salary. Looks like he was under something at Lonsdale College. He has his own story, written a few weeks ago, about the master of Lonsdale's retirement. There's nothing in it that everyone doesn't know already. So why should he keep it in a special file and put these initials there? D.C. There's Dennis Cornford. He's one of the college fellows. Candidate to succeed C.B. So it clicks B. Bream. So who's A.M.? I don't know. It's not Julian Stores, obviously. We can forget about Stores now we know his girlfriend was murdered by mistake. Well, he couldn't have killed Owens anyway. Not if he was in Bath. Well, it's better check that it was, I suppose, and make sure there really is a conference. Right. I know his face, don't I? Lord Hardiman. He used to be government spokesman on transport. Very hot on family values. Haven't heard him pronouncing recently. And these others... Well, this one is fraud. This one is fiddling the books. And this... This... See for yourself. They all go back a long way, but this one, this one, I have heard of. Kenneth Martin was a businessman about to sail away from his wife with some bimbo. So wife and daughter shot him and then set fire to the boat. Alice Martin. She's here. She is indeed, but what's she got to do with the mastership of Lonsdale? I want all these people investigated, now. So I've, I've got to go to my son's school this afternoon. See the headmaster. On a Saturday? Yeah, it's, it's uh, him and his mates. I, I don't know what they've done exactly. But the headmaster summoned all the parents. I'm sorry, Liz, we're dealing with a double murder here. I've got to go, sir. I'll only be an hour or so. Well. Well, do what you can before you go. It's been absolutely... Like to get out for a bit? I realise you and Geoffrey Owens, but... 
had. No, we did not. I could never. Not with a man like that. Like what, exactly? You couldn't trust him. Oh, come on. You can't seriously expect me to jeopardize my marriage, my own happiness, and Dennis's. Well, now, Dennis's happiness. You're new to Oxford. You don't understand. The Dons are malicious, spiteful creatures. They don't vote for someone. They vote against them. That's why they'll vote against Dennis, even though he's the best man for the job. Why? I don't understand. He's let them know how much he wants it. A fatal error. They'll vote for Julian in spite of his wife, because he doesn't seem so ambitious. Though, of course, he is. Probably more. Are you saying... Do you mean Julian already has it in the bag? <laughs> because if so... It would be if the bag in this case wasn't a money bag. The spite of the Lonsdale fellows is nothing compared to their greed. And a million and a half pounds? Well, I really do control the future, Shelley. Dennis can be master, but only if you do what I want. I think you should ask yourself, would Dennis ever forgive you if he knew you'd ruined the one great chance in his life? It drove him mad. All the other girls rolled over, but I... I'm not like that. I look for... I don't know, but not... If that's how you felt, how could you be friends? Oh, I... I baffled him. Jeff wanted to understand what it was I... I... I think... I was the only one who ever told him off. His mum died when he was a little boy, you see. He left his whole family behind when he moved south. He boasted about that. How they were all very ordinary people, while he... <sighs> it's not very flattering to be treated as mother by someone of his age, but... There was a conscience there. Vestigial, but... Very vestigial, I'd say. Did you know he was a blackmailer? Uh, he seems to have been blackmailing Sir Clixby Bream, among others. And, um... I believe you also know Dennis Cornford. He seems to have been blackmailing him, too. Oh, my... My God! This is too awful, like... What? Dennis went to see Geoffrey last night. I saw him. Join you in a minute. French. That's got nothing to do with it. It's a question of manners. I thought at least we'd brought you up to be well mannered. Quite apart from the fact we've got a double murder on our hands. I've had to leave work in the middle of an investigation because of you and your mates. Can you help me write my apology? Please, Dad, you know I'm no good at French. Ask your mother. I've got to get back to work. When you get home, Dad? Well, I may be late tonight. You never help me. You're always too busy. Why do you put up with it? That stupid old bloke ordering you about. Now look. Time you got a life. Is 
that's funny. Jeffrey Owens. You may have been the last person to see him alive, except his murderer, of course. What were you doing at Owens last night, sir? Well, he wanted to do an interview about the mastership. Seemed pretty sure I was going to get it. I don't know why. And I do bits and pieces for the mail, uh, economic matters. Uh, I'd done a piece on the EMU, actually, trying to simplify it for the layman. And he, he sort of How long were you there, sir? About half an hour. And then? I went home. My wife will tell you. You see, it's not so much last night as this morning. First thing this morning. Oh, that's easy enough. I jogged before breakfast uh, along the lanes around Rousham with Paul Thompson. He's a solicitor in Bicester. He'll tell you. Thank you, sir. And the uh, journalism, that's your only connection with Mr. Owens? Absolutely. Sure, sir. Because, you see, we believe he was engaged in blackmail. Good God. Jeff. Really? I, I'm... We found a piece of paper with your initials, among others. I... There must be hundreds, thousands of people with my initials. Connected with Sir Clixby Bream. I understand, sir, that uh, you and Miss Adele Cecil... Oh, everyone knows that. I mean, it was before. Before I went to America and met my wife. Does she know about it? Of course. Any time you want to do it again. Once was quite enough. <laughs> well, if that's your attitude. Actually, you could do it a thousand times, and I still wouldn't support Dennis. You Americans are so naive. What the hell do you mean? Dennis once had an affair with my wife. Never told you that, did he? He ruined my marriage. I've waited a long time for the chance to ruin his. Thank you for being so obliging. But you said you... have you... sold yourself like a common whore for nothing. Dennis will never be master. You bastard. So you would found us feast, my dear. Vodkas and tonic before lunch. Then have a whole bottle of wine. Darling, look. Tonight is very important. You really... Just to... wait till you see the dress I bought him, Bath. Angela Stores. Who? Oh, they kept the file open. Alice Martin got off the murder because the only evidence was a confession from her daughter. Deborah, she was called, gave it to an undercover policewoman, which the court ruled made it invalid. So, mother and daughter walked off without a proverbial stain. Changed their surname to Cullingham. Alice became Angela, Deborah Diane. And ten years later, Angela Cullingham became Mrs. Angela Stores. But how did Owens know that? Well, he's a reporter. He could follow the story. But if they got off, they can't be tried again. So how would he use... Judicial rules don't apply in Fleet Street, Lewis. Especially if someone wants a story forgotten. And Stores, just imagine. A distinguished scholar about to become master of an Oxford college. His wife suddenly exposed us as a murderess. Oh, we've cracked it, Lewis. The stores were in Bath last night, sir. There is a conference. I got Jackson to check it out. They were served breakfast in the hotel room at eight this morning. Yes, but, but they were in Oxford when Rachel James was killed. Yeah, but we're assuming it's the same killer, aren't we? 
Well, perhaps when the first attempt went wrong, they hired someone to shoot Owens for them. Well, fixed up a professional killer. Dr. and Mrs. Stills, within 24 hours. Well, if AM didn't kill Owens, that just leaves CB and, and DC. And for the last two mornings, Dennis Cornford was jogging round Rousham with a highly respectable solicitor. Well, then it, it must be Sir Walsid Bream. Let's find out. You know, sometimes I wonder why I married you. Other times, I know exactly. Don't, don't. You'll wreck the illusion. Owens was a bit of a crawler, but he didn't attempt to blackmail me, I assure you. Why do you think your name was in his file? I can't think. I mean, I've never done anything, so far as I remember. I'm sure it would be something that you remember. What else was in this file? Nothing. That's what's so odd. Where were you between 7 and 7.30 this morning, sir? In bed. Have you any...? One of the great lacks in my life, Chief Inspector, is a regular concubine. Look, this is really... I'm sorry, I mean... sir, but if you wouldn't mind. My wife died three years ago. Since when I... My housekeeper comes in at a quarter to eight to make my breakfast. She saw me this morning at the usual time. Got a carter? Yes, but really it's quite preposterous to accuse me. Oh, we're not accusing you, sir. Just trying to eliminate you from our inquiry. Can you think of any reason why Owen should have kept this cutting about the mastership? Perhaps he knew something about one of the candidates for my succession. Oh. Uh -huh. Julian Storrs did spend his youth in the South Seas, measuring the size of women's breasts. A very important work, apparently, but a very discreet man. Dennis Cornford, though, went off to the Harvard Business School for a year, came back with the most appalling jargon, and one of his students for his wife. We know nothing about her. Americans, American women, you know, they have very different ideas to ours about... About what? She's very open, you know, about her ambition for her husband. And Mrs. Storrs? Angela, she's ambitious too, of course, but uh, more subtle. Late marriage, not quite top draw, but then these days... I like Angela. Uh, look, I'm awfully sorry, but we've had this feast and we have a most important guest, George Summers, Allied Steel Engineering. He's making a most generous donation to... If you could just give me the name and address of your housekeeper, sir. Oh, come. Do you honestly think... I never think, sir. Didn't get a degree. Where the hell have you been? Chapel's in five minutes. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About you and Quigsby's wife. Why didn't you tell me? For God's sake, get your clothes on. We'll talk about this later. But you don't know what you've done. You don't know. Clothes! It's your fault. What is my fault? Ten years ago. Eight years before I met you. For God's sake, this is all very old history. Anyway, who told you? He did, of course. He's never forgiven you. When did he say that? When was this? This afternoon. He came around this afternoon. He came around to tell you that? Why? What's going on between you two? All you ever talk about is the mastership, the mastership. It's the only thing you care about. Well, if you wanted it that bad... What? He said he'd make sure you get it. I didn't know... Wait, wait, wait. He said... Yes. And you? Yes. 
so you could be master of Lonsdale Bastard College. Oh, for God's sake, you are the stupidest. How could you fall? He's been screwing Angela's stores for years. You must leave for. Oh, my God. Shelley. How could you? I was trying to help you. You filthy tart. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, my God. I'll kill you, you bitch. <laughs> Shelley, Shelley, let me see. Shelley, oh my God, Shelley. Androids, Lonsdale College, emergency. Mutton dressed as lamb, but never before as chicken. Morse. I'm at Lonsdale College. Get Dr. Hobson over here right away. We've got another violent death on our hands. We are standing for grace. Benedict Knobis, Deus Omnipotens, et his donis, quae ex libera litati tua sunturi sus. Per Iesum Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. One of the students saw the whole thing. And I'm very sorry we imagined, even for a moment. You don't know what sorrow is. Would you like to tell me exactly what happened, sir? She loved me so much. She. Resigning my fellowship, I couldn't. Bream, I kill him. People, people who like tearing the wings off a butterfly. 
I uh, don't want to at a time like this, but you're really sure you can't help us about the death of Geoffrey Owens? Owens, I'm, I'm sorry I can't. I, I only knew him on business. Oh, my God. She... She was... at home, you know. But you need to be fresh for tomorrow morning, sunny now. So I do. DC? There's someone else with the initials DC. Della Cecil. She's Adele, not Della. No, Owen's called Adela. Look, we've believed everything she's told us, haven't we? She pointed us at Dr. Stores and then she pointed us to Mr. Comfort. But everything diverted attention away from her. Now, perhaps she was having an affair with Owens and he was two-timing her with Rachel James. Or maybe there was no mistake in the number of the house. She killed both of them. Maybe she did. Moss? Sad case. Sad. I have to tell you things like this. There's a pub down the road. You wouldn't like to buy me a drink. I'd love to, but... Oh, no, sorry, I forgot. Would you let me buy you a drink? I'm sorry, but... Uh, there's someone I have to see. Oh, well, then, of course. No drinking on duty for Chief Inspector Morse. Right, then. I'll see you at Bloxham Drive tomorrow morning. I think we should try and get there before the murder, don't you? Save a lot of time. Good night, Doctor. Doing pretty well. Well, people who do crosswords have blanks in their lives. I haven't a clue how to fill them. Don't you think? Well, when I told you Geoffrey Owens was blackmailing people, you didn't happen to be one of them. What on earth could he blackmail me about? Dennis Cornford. Who the hell told you about that? Dr. Stores. Julian Stores should look to his own affairs. And what does that mean? Him and Rachel. Then his daughter, the stepdaughter. Rachel told me she was living with a married man and he left a wife and three children. Oh, he was useless for Rachel. Don't You're not you? answering my question. Oh, come on. Dennis and I were grown-ups. Neither of us was married. It all ended three years ago when you... And who on earth would care in this day and age anyway? God, you have to abuse children or, or dogs or... You suspected me all along, haven't you? Pretending to be nice when all the time... Please. Something very... tragic happened this evening. There was an accident. Mrs. Cornford is dead. Oh, God, no. Oh. Oh, poor Dennis. Beautiful girl. It 
was so in love with her. Oh. Oh, poor Dennis. Do you still love him, Adele? No, no. I'm, I'm long over that, but... Did you love Geoffrey Owens? No. Ever? No! Where were you at 7.30 this morning? Down the road, shooting Geoffrey, of course. Just as I shot Rachel on Friday. Saturday mornings, I'm disc jockey for the Nuffield Hospital Radio between 6 a.m. and 9. About 20 people can tell you where I was between those hours. Satisfied? Delighted. This can be a bugger of a job sometimes. You have to put aside all you know. How you could possibly imagine? I have to imagine everything. So many deaths. So much horror. How can you bear it? My mother was a Quaker. I have an overwhelming sense of duty. Even when it goes against your own interest? Especially then. Uh, how can I make it up to you? Well, you could start by telling me your name. Morse. Everyone just calls me Morse. I do have a first name, of course, but um, I'd have to know you better. You won't get to know me better if you don't tell me. Right. My... A whole life's effort has revolved around Eve. Nine letters. And that is the truth. The whole truth. Half another. While I work it out. I'd love to, but... Better be off, then. This, um... Quaker side of you. It doesn't overwhelm everything else, I hope. Good night. Catching up on your sleep, Lewis. Just thinking. <laughs> Any joy? Modified rapture. She is completely innocent. Not completely. Her and Dennis Cornford. What were you thinking about? Someone else with the initials DC. Angela Storr's daughter, Diane Cullingham. I'll pick you up at six in the morning. We're off to Bath. This exchange teacher over from France, very young. They all hate French. She's no good at discipline, obviously. And the form got out of hand and... Made her cry. I feel so ashamed that he doesn't get enough of me time, my lad. That's the problem. Not enough quality time. And I told him off told me to get a life. I said something like that to my dad once. He looked as though I'd hit him. He said, I've done what I can for you and... He said, I've done my best. I've tried to set you an example. 
If you think there's a better way to live, that's up to you, but I've done my best. And that's all anyone can say. But that's just it. Have I? Of course you have. Please ring room service. Thanks. That is non-fat milk. One non-fat, one ordinary. Thanks. They got here about half seven Friday evening and ate in the restaurant. Got the itemised bills if you want them. Never know. What did they have for Saturday breakfast? Um, full English for both of them with hot chocolate. Well, not slimming, eh? For lunch, she just had a goat's cheese salad. Which is? And a bottle of red wine, which isn't. What did he have? He was out at a conference, and they had to go back to Oxford for dinner. But this morning, one full English breakfast with chocolate, the other special request for virtually fat-free milk with um, Weetabix, natural yoghurt and brown toast and decaffeinated coffee. Why would anyone suddenly change her habits like that? Well, perhaps she didn't. Perhaps it was two different women. How many single women were staying here on Friday night? I could soon find out for you. Just tell Sergeant Lewis. Morning, sir. Hello, what are you doing here? Working, sir. Same as you are. Uh, could I have a moment? Uh, yes, but uh, I'm due at my conference at night. I shan't keep you long, sir. Where's Mrs. Thorpe? Is she sleeping in? Look, you, you don't need to tell her about... Uh... No, no. I'll walk with you. Mrs. Livingston. She's a regular. Takes her son out from school most weekends. Miss or Mrs.? Probably Miss. Caroline Gore. She's still here. American. And Miss Diane Cullingham. We'd not seen her before. This Miss Cullingham, where does she live? Tame. Near Oxford. Enjoying the hotel? The food here. You and your wife, you're gourmets, I understand. Well, I am. Uh, my wife, alas, is diabetic. Which means she's rather limited in what she can... Does the name Geoffrey Owens mean anything to you, sir? The Oxford mailman? Yes, he um, rang me just the other day. Why? He was shot yesterday morning by the same gun that shot Miss James. Good God. He was Miss James's next-door neighbour. Really? No, I, I, I didn't know that. No? Oh, God, what a dreadful thing. For heaven's sake, I mean... Did Miss James ever talk to you about him, sir? Not that I recall. I mean, I really don't remember her ever saying anything about him. But then, I mean, we didn't have much time for that kind of... <laughs> All right, sir. Uh, but you do understand why I felt obliged to see you. Yes, 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 of course. I mean, if anything does occur to you, um, at what time will you be back from your conference? I, uh... Well, um, to tell you the truth, I was... I was planning to skip the 11 o'clock session. It's about Laplanders, and they're not really my... Um... My wife and I were planning to take a walk. Right, we... right. Thank you, sir. Diane Cullingham. Spent Friday night only. Thought so. Lives in Tame. DC Jackson's on standby. Well done, Liz. Right, stores went back to the level. 
Get Jackson to confirm she is who we think she is. Meanwhile, you haven't got a pound, have you? I seem to have... Uh... Thanks. You improve your mind with that, Lewis. But first, ask the maid if she thinks it was the same woman she saw in the store's room both days. And, uh, we may need some collaboration from our local colleagues. Right, sir. You'll find me in the Dower House. There's so many breakfasts. It's the important, Cathy. I think... Well, I definitely saw this morning. Yesterday. She was still sort of under the bedclothes. Just sort of grunted. So you couldn't swear it was the same woman? I wouldn't want... Thanks. is the best in the world, Lewis. No question about that. But some of the words... You need a dictionary. I thought you'd swallowed one at birth. Stores. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. I'm ready for your walk. I'm sorry, sir. Madam. Oh, well, this is my sergeant, Sergeant Lewis. I wonder if you mind answering some questions about the deaths of Rachel James and Geoffrey Owen. Shall we? Miss Cullingham? Yes. DC Jackson. May I come in? I know where you were alleged to be on Friday morning, madam, but where were you on Friday night and Saturday morning? I was here, at the hotel. When? What do you mean, when? I was here all night. We got here, what time was it, Julian? It would be, say, 6.30, 7 o'clock. We never left the hotel. Sure about that, madam? You can ask the concierge. He took the car away, didn't bring it back till yesterday afternoon. So we had to uh, go to Oxford for the feast. Ah, but Mrs. Stores didn't need your car Friday night, did he, madam? Not when you had your daughters. Diane Cullingham is your daughter. And she did stay here Friday night. In another room in the hotel. Taking your place in your bed sometime early on Saturday morning. While you drove back to Oxford in her car, waited till seven o'clock, then went to call on Geoffrey Owens, by arrangement, I presume. You'd told him you'd got the money he wanted in return for his silence. He was blackmailing you about the strange death of your first husband. But of course you couldn't trust him, could you? So you shot him, just as you shot Rachel James, by mistake, the previous morning. Now look here, Inspector. Do you want to make a statement now, sir? Because if so, I must caution you. You are a diabetic, Mrs. Stores. Yes. But your daughter is not. She eats a hearty breakfast while you... You bloody fool! You... None of this had anything to do with me, Inspector. I didn't even know she'd killed her first husband. <laughs> That's right, blame me. While you were with that child, I was going to make us master. Angela Stores, I'm arresting you on the charge of the murders of Rachel James and Geoffrey Owens. You don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so. But anything you do say may be written down.
Well, what can I say? One fellow of the college and his wife are arraigned for murder. Another suspected of pushing his wife downstairs. No, he isn't. It was an accident. One entirely of your making. Oh, come. I mean, I'm very sorry. Appalled. But really, one little act of infidelity. Destroyed her. That's very melodramatic, officer. But since both candidates have now withdrawn, I suppose I shall simply have to soldier on. Oh, if you attempt to do that, sir, I shall see that the full details of your deceit of Mrs. Cornford are made known to the press. That is blackmail. You deserve ten years. The sooner you leave Oxford, the better, sir. Well done, horse. Very well done indeed. So, let's see if I've got this clear. Julian Storrs murdered Kenneth Martin, right? No, sir. Mrs. Storrs, then Martin, murdered her then husband, Kenneth, with the help, not entirely willing perhaps, of her daughter, Diane. I see. How come she was such a good shot? Her first husband bought her a gun. She was a member of a gun club, practiced regularly. And, of course, on him. <laughs> well, I think you've done what you and Lewis. I was talking to the chief constable only ten minutes ago. Arranging another match? I'm giving up golf. It's better than giving up work, sir. Yes, well, on days like today, when things go well, I feel... <laughs> I feel I will uh, soldier on. That's the spirit, sir. That which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Are you feeling all right, Morse? Tennyson, sir. My father made me learn it by heart. You made it. What else do I have to do on a Sunday? But hang around in pubs for a policeman. Uh, you haven't met Sergeant Lewis, have you? Adele Cecil. Hi. Hello. What will you have to drink? A malt. That's all right. Ah, it's very all right. Lewis, you're in the chair. What? You still owe me a pint from two days ago. A pint of malt whiskey. This anagram around Eve. I've tried and I've tried, but all I can come up with is Endeavour. <laughs> and no one's called Endeavour. Surely. I, I told you my mother was a Quaker. And Quakers sometimes call their children names like um, uh, Hope and uh, Patience. My father was obsessed with Captain Cook, and his ship was called Endeavour. Why aren't you both laughing? You poor sod. I'm not calling you Endeavour. Call him, sir. He likes that. <laughs> oh, no. I'll stick to Morse, like everyone else. Cheers. This evening, sir? <laughs> Certainly not. If you'd just give me the keys then, sir. Are we going to have um, room service or go down to dinner? 
I thought perhaps both. Thank <laughs> you.